This video is going to be about submission. Now I don't like that word, it has a negative connotation to me, but I'm going to go ahead and use it because it's the word that we usually use when we talk about this subject. Now I have talked about submission before, but I think the way I phrased it was that in most cases it's better if the woman lets the man lead. But a lot of people out here don't know what makes a man worthy of being submitted to. No, it's not just because he's the man and no, it's not because Jesus said so. Now let's talk about this Jesus said so thing for a second. Now I know what you're saying, oh you're an atheist so of course you don't believe that. Oh, well, now hold on, I'm going to be fair. The Bible says wives should submit to their husbands. Okay, that's fine, but when was the Bible written? Like two, three thousand years ago? I couldn't find an exact consensus, but somewhere around there. What was society like back then and what was the role of women in that society? Were they doctors, lawyers, engineers, or even secretaries or payroll specialists? <laughs> Did they even go to school? No. Back then, basically, there was two things you could do as a woman. You could be a wife slash mother, or you could be a prostitute. Now, if a woman wanted to be a wife and a mother, as noble of a thing as that is to be, that doesn't pay any money. She had to attract a man that was willing to support her and any kids she was planning on having. Now, if a man takes a woman for his wife, and brings her into the home that he built or bought and is feeding her with food that he bought or killed whatever then you damn right she better be submissive that was his money and his house and she was in no position to be making any decisions how you gonna tell a man or anybody for that matter what to do when they're supporting you back then if a woman decided that she didn't want to be submissive and didn't want to do what her husband asked her to do he probably put her ass out and then she would get to discover that other option that women had, which was prostitution. So to me, it seems like that Bible verse was more for the benefit of the woman than the man. And while it may make us feel all warm and fuzzy inside to think that the man should lead just because God created him first, or because God says it's God and then the man and then the woman and then the children, no, it's much simpler than that. The man was providing everything so the woman can either get with his program or get the fuck out. It's the same reason you submit to your boss, whether they're male or female. In general, people don't submit to their bosses because they love them or because God said so. It's because that boss signs their paycheck. So having someone submit to you is not about your sex. It's about the position that you hold. Back in biblical times, men held the position of sole providers. Women had to submit in order to keep getting provided for. Now before some Bible scholar comes in here and says, well actually women had lots of other jobs. Yeah, I know, I know. There was Dorcas the seamstress. But actually, I'm not even sure if she did that for a living. It might have been her charity work. But anyway, the point is, the best route for a woman to go back then was to marry a man and have him provide for her. Now, another reason that people submit to another person is because that person is older. Back in biblical times, it was a common occurrence for men to marry females who were way younger than them. Why would a 13, 14, 15 year old girl do anything but submit to a grown ass man? And why would he consult her about anything besides what's for dinner? Moving right along, another reason that a person might submit to another person is because that person is bigger and or stronger and can kick their ass. Now even today, generally men are bigger, stronger and can kick women's ass. But the difference between now and then is, back during biblical times, men could get away with it. You put your hands on a woman nowadays, you'll get a free ride down to the police station. So unless you think you can get away with beating a woman into submission, you're going to want to not do that. During biblical times, if a woman did quote unquote step out of her place, I'm pretty sure she did get a smack across the face or worse. Which further goes to show that that Bible verse telling women to be submissive to their husbands was probably more for their benefit than the man's. So if people want to use that verse as evidence of anything, they really should take into account the historical context. Now let's fast forward to the year 2010, a time when most men are no longer the sole providers, people have started marrying people a lot closer to their own age and physically forcing someone into submission is no longer acceptable. Why in this day and age do women need to submit to men? Well, they don't need to, but here's why they should. Like I said in one of my other videos, just because the times have changed doesn't mean that men's mentalities have changed. When somebody challenges a man, he's either gonna submit to the person who's challenging him or there's gonna be a fight. Now, if a man backs down from a fight with a man who's bigger than him, then that's understandable. I'm not saying he's going to feel good about it, but at least he can say, well, he's bigger than me. What do you want me to do? But to back down from or get punked by someone who you're quote unquote supposed to be able to beat up, that doesn't make a man look or feel all that manly. And a man needs to feel like a man. Now you can let men fill you in on all the rules about who they'll let punk them out and who they won't. 
I think most men find it unacceptable to be punked or beat up by a male who's smaller than them. That is, unless he has a weapon or something. But apparently, for some men, it's unacceptable to be punked out by a gay dude. I remember hearing this news story, maybe it was 10, 15 years ago, about this guy who was in the military, and he got in a fight with this gay guy who was also in the military, and the gay guy cleaned his clock. So after the fight, all the other men started teasing him about quote-unquote letting a faggot beat him up. And after a while, he got so fed up with it that he took a bat and beat the gay dude to death. Now that's an extreme case, but that's just how serious some men take it when they get beat up by someone they're not supposed to get beat up by. So if men don't like to be beat into submission by other men who may be gay or smaller than them, then you can only imagine how it makes them feel to get punked out by a woman. Like I said before, when you challenge a man, he's either going to submit to you or he's going to fight you. Real men who are on point do not like to submit to women and they won't. So then we have to go to option B. In the days before police protection and restraining orders, if a woman stepped up to a man, that's about the time she got smacked. That's why a woman shouldn't challenge a man to the point where she's not willing to back down. That's what a woman staying in her place really means. It's not just because she has a vajayjay, it's because most of the time a woman cannot physically hold her ground against a man. So if a man can't get you to submit to him, and he's not allowed to beat you into submission, then what's he going to do? Option number three, he's not going to stick around. So what that means for women is that you also have three options. You can either submit to your man blindly because he's a man and because Jesus said so, in which case you don't have a problem. Or you can find a man who doesn't mind submitting to you, or as I like to call that type of man, a bitch. Or you can find a man that you don't mind submitting to, one who's holding it down, handling the financials, keeping you taken care of. In that situation, why would you not defer to the man? Hopefully he's a man who loves and cares about you enough to take your opinion into consideration in his decision making. But the final decision is his because it's his money It's his house, it's his life that he built, and you just joined it. Just like in biblical times. But anyway, what you want to remember is that when two people are in opposition and neither one will back down, that's a fight. If it's two men, it's going to come to blows or guns or whatever. If it's a man and a woman, society says he's not allowed to beat the woman into submission. So the woman may win the battle, but lose the war. Because he'll back down from you one time, but while he's doing that, he'll be saying goodbye. He'll go find another woman who makes him feel like a man. Now you may call a man like that weak, but he really didn't have any other option. I mean, what did you want him to do? Beat you down? What else could he do outside of kicking your ass to show you that he's strong? Because that's exactly how he would show another man that he's strong. An on-point man is not going to brave the education world to get his degree, and then brave corporate America or fight to get his own business started, only to come home and do what you tell him to do. An on-point man may have 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. If you want an on-point man, you're gonna have to defer to him. The male ego does not allow for him to submit to someone whose ass he feels he can kick unless that person is in a position of power over him like a police officer or a boss or the president or somebody who has a gun. So hopefully you can find a man who deserves your submission so it won't be a problem. And yes, I said deserves because don't get it twisted. Not every man deserves to be submitted to. It's an earned position. 